Welcome to Tree Update 37, this time coming from Brandenburg near Berlin in Germany. Perhaps one of the most frequent questions we get from you is how do we actually con your trees? Well, let me show you. I came to a beautiful forest near Berlin in Wilmesgärten to show you how we count your trees when we're on the field. But before we dive into it, counting trees manually is only possible when trees have been planted in a very systematic way, for example in an agroforestry production system. If not, it becomes quite tricky and so we have to resort to other methodologies. So there are many methodologies out there to scientifically estimate the number of trees growing in an area, but one that we like to use is called PCQ, short for point center quarter. So the first thing you have to do, you have to determine two parallel lines on your field. So for the sake of this video, I've already prepared them here. And on each line, you will determine points with the same distance between each of them. And you need to have at least 20 points. So now that I've set up my parallel lines, I will determine these points. And what I will do, I will put a beautiful cross that I've created with 90 degrees angle, put it on the point, which will help me identify four different quadrants. So one, two, three, and four. I will take my measuring tape and I will measure the distance between the center of the cross to the nearest tree that is falling within that quadrant. 53 centimeters. I will also record the species and I will also record the height. 58 centimeters. And if the tree is thicker than my wrist, I will also uh, calculate the circumference of that tree. All right, so once I'm done with the first quadrant, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the th second, the third and the fourth. Record the distance, the height, the species, also the circumference. And once I'm done with this point, I'm gonna do the same exercise for the next point. So measuring the distance of trees in each quadrant gives us an indication about the number of trees per square meter. So eventually about the density of the forest we're trying to grow. And because we save all of that information inside an app with exact geotags, we can always come back to that area one or two, three years after and check on your trees and see if they are growing well and if they are healthy. So we don't always do this ourselves. We sometimes employ local auditors who can check more regularly on uh, the sites. And combining this with satellite monitoring technologies, that's actually how we check on your trees and see if they're doing well. But we told you all about these methodologies in tree update number 30, which you can watch again here. Before we wrap it up, let me give you a quick update on a few projects that I visited recently. In November, I traveled to Malawi, where I visited the team at the Farm Radio Trust. This is perhaps one of the most interesting projects that we support. The Farm Radio Trust produces radio shows about the benefits of FMNR, which stands for Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration, which is basically a technique where you prune bushes on your land and that helps them to grow into trees very quickly. The show teaches farmers in the area about how to take care and prune their trees on their land. So radio is actually widely listened to in rural areas of Malawi. So we hope that with this educational program, we're gonna be able to bring as many trees as possible with just a little bit of care. So what we have seen is that particular groups that were organized to actively listen to these radio shows, the number of trees on their land have increased. So in Malawi, I also visited the team at Wells for Zoe, who focuses on restoring very degraded area together with the local communities. There it was also an opportunity to show them about the PCQ methodology that I just showed you, and we've actually put those skills into practice. The sad news is that these areas have been devastated by fires in a very short rain period this year, but we're already discussing with the team on how to do things better next time, so we'll keep you posted on this too. Then I traveled up north and had a stop in Ethiopia where I visited the team of Mensch of Humension. Thanks to your searches, we've supported more than 300 farmers who are turning part of their land into coffee agroforestry systems. And that's what you can see in these pictures. Within only two years, you see that your trees are really thriving. And I cannot wait to visit them again next year to see their progress. Still in Ethiopia, I also visited the team at the Foundation Green Ethiopia, which Peter, by the way, visited back in 2019. Together with the communities there, they've planted more than hundreds of thousands of trees on mountain slopes since 2018. And all of these efforts are paying off. Farmers have told me there that the water is slowly coming back, the watershed is filling up, and the crop production has slowly increased in the last few years. So your trees are truly changing their lives. 
So that's it for me. Antonia just came back from Bolivia and Mexico. So stay tuned for more about our next three updates. It's going to be about these projects. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you next time.